For the last quarter century, the SHOT Show has been a significant event for Volcourts and Firearms. So the decision for us to not exhibit at this year's show did not come lightly. However, with everything that we took into account and we discuss on this podcast, we simply feel that the best decision moving forward is for us to use those resources towards working on our back orders, developing new products, and seeing where that takes us in 2022. This is the No Excuse to Miss podcast. Welcome to the No Excuse to Miss podcast. I am your host, Scott Volkortson, and here this week with me is co-host Chad Wittrock. He is our Director of Marketing. This week, we are going to dive into all things SHOT Show. And for those of you that aren't familiar with what SHOT Show is, it's the firearm industry's largest show of the year that is typically held in Las Vegas, Nevada during the month of January. It is a industry-only show, so it's typically just dealers, uh, media, and those type of people that will go to the show. But it is our biggest show of the year. And over the last couple of weeks, it's kind of become sort of a hot button issue with some of the larger companies in our industry, such as Sig Sauer, announcing that they will not be exhibiting this year. So we thought it'd be fun to hop on here and just kind of talk a little bit about what SHOT Show is, our history with SHOT Show, and whether or not we'll be going this year. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce Chad again, and we will get started. Yeah, I think this is going to be a really good show to give everybody some some insights or some additional insights into SHOT Show that maybe they don't know or aren't aware of. Let, let's backtrack a little bit since this is an industry-only show, and, and you touched on it um, a bit, Scott. Who all goes to SHOT Show, uh, and how has that maybe even evolved over the years? Who's, who's allowed to go to SHOT Show is maybe a better way to put it. The intention of SHOT has always been that it is an industry show with just dealers, media, and those on the inside that are able to go as as well, obviously as well as all the exhibitors. But then there was a stretch. So in context, we've been going to the shot show for about since 1991, myself personally, since 1995. And it has evolved where for a long time, it was a lot of people getting into the show that probably shouldn't have been there or were just getting there through a friend that was a dealer or exhibitor. And then a few years back, the NSSF and Convex that holds the show, they made a concerted effort to really restrict and try to make sure it was just industry people. And you're never going to get away from some of the outliers getting in, but it definitely, they made a big improvement to try to keep it industry only to the SHOT Show. Right. And I think that that makes a lot of sense and, and being on the marketing side of it. And, and I, I think maybe you'd agree or maybe uh, you'd want to offer your opinion on that as well as, as the balance between buyers and media. Um, there's definitely a lot of media at the show. And obviously, there's been an evolution as, as what constitutes media today. Uh, YouTube, uh, bloggers, uh, anyone with a website, you know, does that constitute as firearms media? Well, and you bring up a really good point because when we first started going, the only way you could get connected with some of the writers, which at that time, the main marketing platform that we had was being in magazines. Right. So if you want to be connected with a writer or editor, a lot of times SHOT Show was that first introduction to them. And it's where you establish those relationships. And to go along with that at the time, back then, you know, most people introduced their new products at SHOT Show. Right. That was the time to do it. It It wasn't social media where you could, it wasn't instantly plugged into your fan base. Correct. And to your point now is it's tough for them to define what media is because, you know, you have uh, YouTubers, you have people with a digital blog, Instagram, or, you know, influencers. And the list kind of goes on and on with that. And the, the other side of that is if you do have a new product throughout the year, you can use all those platforms to launch it when it's ready to go. Yeah, essentially in real time. Correct. You do not have to wait until January to launch that product. So it's kind of evolved and it's, you know, to be honest, it can sometimes be tough too trying to determine at the show the the true credentials of a media person that is at the show. Right. And how much time to give those people at the show. Obviously, it's busy. Um, and I know that, it, you know, buyers have then exp- expressed uh, 
frustration with that aspect of it because it's, it's obviously a, a buy show for dealers uh, and distributors. And to me, that's probably one of the biggest things that has changed since I started going is the level of buying at the show. I was just going to get into that with you and get your thoughts on that. Yeah, because, you know, originally, yes, it was a buying show. A lot of business was done. You know, in, in some cases, people would write their business for an entire year at the SHOT Show. And the exhibitors would have different dating programs, different marketing programs to entice those orders. Right. So SHOT really could have been, you know, if you were a smaller company, could have maybe make or break your year. Yes. I would say that's probably, if we look back at our history, when mom and dad made that decision to go to the initial SHOT Show, mm -hmm. they had no idea what to expect. You know, there wasn't Instagram or Facebook that you could go see what was going on in other booths or prior years. Right. Even websites weren't Correct. huge yet. Yeah, you didn't have web. So really, they went into that almost blind, yep. not knowing what to set up, not knowing how to, you know, what to expect. But it was... That was at the same time that we had just started producing some of our aftermarket components. Mm -hmm. And they were able to set up certain dealers that are now, you know, all these years later, some of our biggest customers. It's still to this day, right? To this day. Yep. You know, and I don't think that ever would have been possible without SHOT Show. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of credit there for, you know, taking businesses or being like a vessel to take businesses to the next level or having that opportunity or potential to take your business to the next level at that show. Correct. And then what would happen is, you know, as your company grew, your booth would grow in size. And it, in a lot of ways, for a long time, it kind of became a credibility thing of what your booth looked like and, right. you know, trying to, you know, keep up with the Joneses, for lack of a better term you know, making sure that your booth represented the product that you had. Right. Which obviously anybody that knows anything about trade shows is expanding your booth even by a hundred or 200 square feet, you know, adds significant cost all the way around everything from, you know, obviously the booth space itself, but then the carpet, the cleaning, you know, the cleaning, the electricity, every time you add a little bit, it, you know, exponentially, adds to your overall cost. Right. And, and even to back up a little bit, was there, do you remember, was there a wait list uh, when your parents got involved in shot initially? I don't believe for the size of booth that they started with, there was. Because at that time, they started with just a 10 by 10 booth. Right. Because I was just thinking about the evolution, you know, of the show and, and kind of to what you were just touching on, like the size of your booth. Most companies, you can't just walk in year one and request to be on on the floor with a certain size booth, correct? Correct. And to NSSF's credit, they have expanded the show for this year. You know, for the last, I believe, 11 years, we've been at the Sands Expo and Convention Center. They've expanded into a new room in Caesars to give more and more companies an opportunity. Right. Because you started at the lower level, you usually have to work up to more of a main level if there's a space available and... You basically, you're on the wait list. Correct. And, you know, once again, if you're not familiar with how the trade shows work, your booth selection is basically based on number of years, size of booth. And if you miss a year, you actually start back at the bottom, regardless of how many points you've accrued over the years. Right. Which is, I think that's something most people probably don't know. So it... It, it, it's definitely a commitment when you decide to go and then make that commitment every single year. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was thinking too, even what do you think the biggest evolutions as far as booth and booth design, I guess, what are the biggest evolutions you've seen as far as Volkortsen goes? Is there years that stand out? Uh, the big upgrade years? I know rolling out the complete firearms was a big deal. Yeah, I think probably every time we go to a new booth size and would redesign our booth or even in the current, you know, in the current size, completely reconfigure the booth to something new would be a big year. Yep. And prior to 2010, when we started going to the Sands Expo and Convention Center, the SHOT Show would move around, which a lot of people aren't aware of. We would go to, we've had it in New Orleans, Dallas, Orlando, 
So even though you may have the same booth size, it could be in a different location with other booths around you. So it's always hard to design that booth for optimal. Right. Yeah. You know, adjust. Correct. But since we've been there, it's, they, they did away with the booth selection up until this year. Mm-hmm. So you kind of knew where you were going to be at and you knew what booths were going to be around you. So you could start designing to gain the optimal, you know, traffic in your booth. But yes, I would say that the biggest change for us was when we, so the Sands is a two level convention center. When we were able to go from a 20 by 30 booth in the, um, what I call the basement, they call it level one (laughs) (laughs) until we moved up to level two with that didn't have some of the height restrictions and different things that came with level one. And we were able to move into like a 20 by 50 booth. Right. That was, that was significant move. And yes, it was. And that was been the same space. How many years would have been now up to 2020? I believe, um, it was five years that we were in that same space. Wow. Yeah. Time flies. Cause you said what number 26 for you? Yes. Yeah. So maybe pivoting a bit, um, and kind of addressing some of what's going on in the industry, obviously like Sig Sauer announced that they will not be exhibiting this year. Um, did you have any, any thoughts? How did that news, I guess, hit you? Initially I was a little surprised, but after reading their press release and listening to them, you know, we were able to listen to Tom Taylor from SIG, one of their top level executives on John Bartolo's podcast. And he discussed, you know, some of the reasons for it, you know, and then it made a lot of sense on how, how they arrived at that decision they did. Right. It, it, I think, it, like you said, there's Tom made so many good points in that podcast. And I, I urge anybody to listen to uh, him on John Bartolo uh, to get those insights. Um, I guess as a company, we've been discussing SHOT Show probably since, well, I would call it a year. Obviously, there was no show in 2021, but we were already discussing, um, I guess, where the show falls in our grand scheme of things um, as far as our our vision for the company. Um, and then they did roll out, speaking of booth redesign, we, we're, we would be working on a redesign this year um, due to... Uh, they changed the layout of the show. Correct. Um, so I guess what are some things we've been looking at in your mind or what has stuck out for you as we've reviewed this decision over the last few months and then getting even in the last 30 days? The, the obvious sticking point to us or the first thing I'll start with is the significant portion of any whether you want to put it in a marketing budget, a sales budget, wherever you put the shot show, you know, expense at just the significant amount of budget that is required for the, that one show in comparison to other ways that we can take that same amount of money and market differently, you know, and it's very tough because one, the shot show is a huge, you know, revenue driver for the NSSF. Correct. Yep. Which we are big fans of the NSSF. You know, do we agree with every single decision they make? Probably not. Right. But for the most part, you know, they are right now probably one of our strongest lobbying groups and in particular for industry members. Yeah. I totally agree. You know, so by not... you know, and I guess I'll just say that we've decided we are not going to exhibit at this year's show. Right. And that, and that was when uh, we went back and forth on that. And especially over the last 30 days, really assessing correct uh, how to arrive at that decision. Correct. And we went back and forth. And so back to the, you know, we obviously still want to support the NSSF. Yep. We will still be making a donation to that organization. But it came down to th- they've already announced you know, they expect a 10 to 20% attendance decline due to, you know, COVID and everything else that's going on in the world. Correct. Yep. So, and with the booth redesign, we already have more, we'd have more money in this show than any show prior. Correct. Which really raises questions on whether or not that makes sense, putting more money into a show than ever, 
knowing that we're going to be at least 10 to 20 percent down in attendance. Right. It was, it was really tough for us. And we had kind of the unfortunate luck of redesigning our booth for 2020, um, which we were really excited about. We used it for for 2020. Uh, the show was canceled in 2021. Um, and upon cancellation, they d- um, decided to relay out the show. So we had to select a new booth, which put us back into redesigning um, another booth space. And it was actually going to be a larger booth this year. Yeah, we were actually going to go to a 40 by 50 because when that booth selection took place was, I think, the first part of summer when it seemed like the world was going to be getting back to normal. Yeah, we we and, thought it, there was that really strong surge going right into June, I think, where we thought, you know, and, and that's another component is part of what we love about trade shows is that face to face interaction. Yeah, it's the people that you only see about once a year. So yes. many of them there. Yep. And I would say that's even become more of a driving factor of the trade show now versus making it a buying show is it's network building, relationship building. And like you just said, getting to see people that we only see once a year. And right now with uh, Nevada having a mask mandate in place, yep. they kind of control the cards of how this show is going to look. So something we had to consider besides, I don't think anybody wants to work a convention for four straight days wearing a mask. I know I personally don't. <laughs> yeah, I, It wouldn't be very fun. I would agree. And I think it makes it a very impersonal show. Yeah. It's hard to read facial expressions and, you know, and really, yeah, like you said, make it personal and engaging. Correct. And the other part of that is, so with us having a booth redesign this year, all of our exhibit building and all that stuff has to start prior to now. Yeah, our deadlines would be in the middle of later this month on all of that. Correct. And that money is not refundable should the show end up being canceled or ultimately Nevada just says you can't have it in its current form. Correct. Yeah. So at that point, if we invest that much money into a new booth and for whatever reason, the show would be canceled or it'd be a shell of what the shows have been in the past. It's very, it makes it very tough for us to then pivot and move into the other markets we would like to do. Because that money, it would basically be... It'd be in a warehouse. <laughs> it'd be in a warehouse, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, And I think you know that, that's a great point. So let's, let's maybe move into that just to give everyone an idea. We talked about maybe pivoting. Um, what do you see um, us pivoting towards um, if we don't... As, we're, as we announced, we're not going to exhibit at SHOT Show. Uh, what plans do we have? I think something that we had to consider is that The world has gone more to a direct-to-consumer model, at least from what the way I see it. I would completely agree with that. And obviously, in our industry, we will never get away from that middleman because the way the uh, firearm laws work, we have to ship to a licensed FFL dealer. Correct, yep. Which is who we reach typically at the SHOT Show. However, I think some of the stuff that we can do this year, because... What we have found over the years is the number one seller of our products is word of mouth and being able to handle them physically at a range. Yeah, we, we that makes all seeing someone smile uh, yeah. while handling one of our firearms is still so the best sales tool. So I think what we can do is a combination of things, obviously, but if we direct redirect some of those marketing efforts into working with the dealers to set up possible range days, to set up events in their stores, just some different things. So we are able to get out and we're working with the consumers, but at the same time, we're still reaching those same dealers that we would have reached at SHOT Show. Correct. And we'd even, I think maybe at one point, like to provide even more demo opportunities to dealers and demo firearms for them to use if they have a range on site. Correct. Which is something we'll be implementing in 2022 is a revised range program you know, because we still want to support the dealers. Obviously, we want to get our products into the hands of the consumers, yep. which for the amount of or the significant portion of the budget that went to SHOT Show, you know, really didn't do either one of those. And right. I feel like that's where the world is more moving to. So and the other aspect of that is we control all that. We control which dealers we're working with. We control how they're getting our product, how the event is being run. Yeah. So ultimately 
you know, it's not up to the state of Nevada saying we have to wear a mask or, you right. know, we're going to cancel the show or it's going to be limited attendance, which right now they're not talking about limited attendance. They're obviously not talking about canceling the show, but that's all on the table for the amount of money that we would have invested into a new booth. Right. And I think even back to your previous point, as far as controlling the event, you, you know, and from what I do uh, and my team here is it gives us a chance to also control what we capture what pieces of media we can then show, you know, everyone else on our social media channels, on our website, um, and really give people even more insight into our brand and And, to, and to who's behind our brand, um, our whole team. And something else that comes from those is you get real world instant feedback from customers, good or bad. Yep. (laughs) Yeah. There's no denying it. There's no denying it because you are on a range, you know, many times you're on a range, you're shooting, you know, if a problem arises, it's it's real-time feedback that you're going to see. And you also get a chance to see how the average customer is using your product. Yeah. So sometimes it'll lead to a design change. It'll lead to the way we market the product to those customers so they can, you know, from an educational standpoint. Yeah, we can really define, you know, ideal customers for ideal setups, which is, which is one thing we uh, also are really looking at in 2022 is really helping educate, you know, which configurations, uh, which firearms model is right for what you want to do with it. Yes. Um, would you say, what does shot look like in the future in your eyes? Will we return? Do you think the show will continue to evolve? Um, do you have any predictions? My hope is that the show continues to evolve. And I'm not sure how that looks you know, what, I guess I'm not even sure what feedback to offer. I have some ideas, but you know, that would change the show. But I think one of the big things that we've discussed internally is, you know, I think it has to start with auditing some of the costs involved with shot show and and not just cost for cost sakes, but where that money goes, because so much of that big budget that we use there isn't going to benefit our industry. Yeah. To clarify, I think what you're getting at, there's the amount, the, the costs that are not, they're not benefiting the NSSF. Correct. Right. You know, it's a lot of money, you know, the, the freight aspect, the material handling, the electricity, you know, everything, the internet, it's to me, that part of it has to be updated. Right. And fall more in line with what happens everywhere else in the world, you know, because we've joked a lot of times that if you ever tried to get some of these budgets approved right. for what happens at SHOT Show, nobody would ever do that other than it's SHOT Show. Yeah. I think the joke was if I approached you to utilize Wi-Fi for four days for, well, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was like $1,500. For the um, package that we had, yes. Yeah. So, you know, would would that be approved? And I would say in most cases, probably not. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... And I don't want to, you know, ever obviously close the door on SHOT Show because it is something that we've done for a long time. But I think part of it, too, is why that was such a difficult decision for us to make to not exhibit at this year's show is because it is something we've always done. Yeah. But then again, and you've heard me say this a lot of times, just because it's always been done that way doesn't necessarily mean it's currently the best way. Yeah, I was going to actually come back around to that. That's one of our that was one of our biggest struggles. And you do reference that a lot that, you know, uh, just because we've always done it cannot be your default answer. And we were fighting ourselves there um, in a lot of our discussions. Correct. And, you know, and it still is a extremely difficult decision for us not to exhibit at this year's show. You know, we may still attend the show just because it's it's that one time a year you get to see a lot of old friends. Yeah, definitely. But when you really sit down and analyze it from a business perspective, you know, with the new booth, with the reduced attendance, with the possibility that more restrictions are in place by then, and then ultimately with the possibility that the show could be canceled if, you know, other companies of like SIG's size and impact in the industry would decide to cancel. Right. Yeah, we're, you know, our budget would be tied up by the end of November. Uh, you know, if anything would change at that point, we would really be out of luck on being able to pivot. Correct. And something else that we had to consider is besides just like the financial side of things, many companies are in, 
in our industry are in a unique position of being several months, if not years behind on inventory levels. Correct. And that's been been something we, we've so, looked at too. Yeah. So, you know, it's going to be a show that we would show up and display product, but we are currently about eight months behind. Yep. So it's tough to get people excited and generate that marketing and then have to tell them towards the end of 2022 is when they would receive it. Right. So a lot of what we want to do there is we're going to reinvest some of those resources into one, ramping up production as much as we possibly can. We've already added, you know, multiple machines this year to try to do that. We've added additional staff to try to help with that. And then to kind of go along with that is the amount of time that it takes to prepare for a show like this and even just building the product that we bring. Yep. Because something else I we don't have just products sitting there that we bring to the show. Each year we bring brand new products yep. because we want to make sure they're being displayed with all of any updates that we made throughout the year. Correct. We don't have a closet or a cage of demo Correct. guns that we just grab every year. No, and full transparency, we did that in the past and we would show up at a show and maybe a trigger would have an old finish on it mm -hmm. or possibly a trigger guard would have an old finish on it. You know, it, and it kind of left, I mean, it was almost embarrassing when we would have those on display trying to explain why that is. Right. So it was easier for us. We actually would build the, I believe we built the SHOT Show display guns. We usually build those in December. We would build those in December, which, you know, is a significant time investment to do that. Yep. And why we do that, you know, two things happen. We're not building customer and dealer, customer and dealer orders. And it limits what we can do as far as innovation and you know, development of new products. Right. So let, let's move into that a bit. So SHOT Show was traditionally known as a time to unveil new product. Uh, we, we do have a couple things up our sleeves for the end of 2021 and into 2022, don't we? Yes, we do. Yeah, we have some smaller releases coming over the next, uh, I would say, 60 days. Yep. And then moving into February, Hopefully it's not March. Our goal is February. We will have a larger uh, launch that we are pretty excited about that we've been working on for quite some time. Very excited. Yep. And by not having to have that deadline of SHOT Show to have it ready, it allows us to change how we launch a product. Our goal is now to have existing product, like, like most industries do. So if you're not in this industry, you're yeah. going to find this odd. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but our goal is to have product ready to go when we launch this. So our dealers, everybody, so as it's launched, everybody can take advantage of it, uh, of the excitement of the launch Yep. versus, you know, maybe three, four or five years ago, or even more recent than that, we would want to have it ready for SHOT Show. Yep. So it may not even be a hundred percent ready, but we'd want to have like some sort of prototype on display. Yeah. And we would typically take orders for it. And we would take orders for it. And, you know, and that's not really fair to the dealers either because it ties up their you know, buying power, not knowing when they're going to get them. Right. And, you know, many times, you know, and if you're a current customer or a dealer of ours, you, you, I'm sure you've seen this and witnessed this, <laughs> but, you know, we would take these orders at SHOT Show and it may be the end of that following year by the time we were shipping them. Yeah. It, I knew it was, it's definitely usually what, four to eight yeah. months, depending on the release. So, yeah. so our goal is by, you know, not at exhibiting this year, it, take some of those resources, take that time and really do it the way it should have been done the entire time. Yeah. I think that's, that's great. And I'm really looking forward to, to that format of a product release. Um, I think that's going to be amazing. So just to, just to recap, um, obviously we announced that we will not be exhibiting at shot 2022. Uh, you did mention a donation to the NSSF as we are a patron member, correct? Yes, that is correct. You know, because that's the last thing in the world we want is to in any way have this come off as some sort of positioning against like what the NSSF is doing, because that's not what it is. Almost in contra or contrary to that, it allows us more freedom to donate to the organizations, you know, that we feel can do the best job of promoting our industry and defending what we love to do. Exactly. You know, but once again, back to our earlier point, if 
we invest in a new booth and the show is eventually canceled, you know, that ties up so much capital that you're not able to then make that donation to the NSSF. You're not able to donate to whichever organization that we feel that we should. Yeah. You know, so yeah, this definitely isn't a move to. You it's know, not like, against the it's NSSF. It's not against the NSSF. It's more pro our business. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. Than it is anti anything because that's not what it is. Yeah, we just felt like doing it this way sets up our 2022 to be the uh, most successful year we can have. Correct. If uh, obviously, if anybody has any questions regarding the podcast, uh, feel free to email podcast at Uh Scott, if there's any dealers, customers listening, if they have any questions uh, regarding SHOT Show, um, product, anything like that, the best place to contact us, just directly to the website, um, give us a call, probably info at volkortzen.com, the best way to go there. Yes, it is. And if anybody has any questions, you know, regarding like certain events that we're looking to do or anything like that, I encourage them to reach out to us, you know, because this is a topic that I'm very passionate about. And, you know, like we discussed earlier, this was not a decision that came lightly not to exhibit. So, you know, people may have follow up questions to what we're saying here or why we decided what we did. Right. And I would encourage them to reach out and I would love to have those conversations with them to discuss further so they can kind of see our point of view on it. Yeah. One of our goals, you know, really is to be able to connect more with, uh, with you guys, which is, um, why we want to do more events and things. So if you have any thoughts, yes, please feel free to reach out to us. Anything else you'd like to, uh, add to wrap that up, Scott? No, I think that pretty well covers it. And, you know, I look forward to getting some of these new products released. It's always fun to do that. And, it's going to feel a little bit different doing that without, with not having shot show in the background or as a deadline. <laughs> right. Right. It's going to be, that's going to be a little bit of pressure off, but uh, yeah, if you are interested in new products, excited to see what we have going on, be sure to follow us on Instagram. Uh, it's Volkortsen underscore firearms. We also have Volkortsen media. Um, be sure to follow those two accounts. The other big thing, obviously we all know we're social media can go these days, please subscribe, go to our website, subscribe to our mailing list. Um, we do, um, only about one email a week, maybe two, if there's a new product coming. Um, but that really will keep you, um, on the inside of what we're doing. So yeah, check that out as well. And, uh, we thank you guys for listening, Scott. Thanks for all the insight into shot show. Thank you. And once again, thank you for everybody listening. We appreciate it.